Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be a short one. This is just for a very specific uh, problem that my circuit simulation students are struggling with. The circuit is reduced to a simple series RLC circuit and we have an initial voltage on the capacitor and an initial current in the coil and all that's happening is that the capacitor is going to discharge and ultimately all energy is going to go out of the circuit and we're going to end up with zero. So we write a KVL equation around the loop as shown there and uh, we differentiate it and then we use our characteristic equation uh, there on the right to solve in the quadratic formula and out pops our two natural frequencies. Those two complex numbers there are called the pair of natural frequencies of this circuit. So you can study that and we've labeled the initial uh, KVL equation one because we're going to return to that. And the next step that we want to do is since we have discovered that the natural frequencies are complex, we know what kind of a solution we're supposed to get. That's the important thing. We know that we're going to get a solution of the form with two exponentials. And as you can see, the complex conjugate pair is up there as arguments of the time, <clears throat> the time exponent. So that is the response that we will get for our natural response. For the current. Now, by using Euler's uh, relation, <coughs> by using Euler's relation and rearranging, we end up with this form of it, which is probably more familiar to you. But we still have our alpha and our beta, which relate to our complex numbers that we just finished calculating. So when we plug them in, we have that solution there. Now, the, we still have to calculate the two arbitrary constants, B1 and B2. And the B1 and B2 are only going to be dependent on that initial capacitor charge and the current through the coil. But before we can do that, we have to differentiate this expression. So we take 2 and we differentiate it to get 3. And so now we have 3 equations. We have the initial KVL circuit. We have the solution circuit or solution equation. And we have the differential of that. That's all we need to get this finished. So we go back to the initial equation, you can pull back and rewind, and we find that L di dt is equal to minus 20. How did we come up with that? Well, um, we'll just go quickly back and explain. When you look at this initial um, expression, the L di dt is the only thing in here we know the VO, the VO is 30 volts. Um, at T equals zero, um, that term there with the integral is gonna be completely zero because T is equal to zero. So RI is going to be the current times the resistance. So we have two constants. We have L di dt equal to RI and VO. So we can easily rearrange, deal with the RI and the VO, put them over on the other side, and that's what gives us the minus 20 over there. So that's very convenient. Now from the next equation, we find that B1 equals 5. That's the easiest of all. Now how can we be so sure that B1 equals 5 from the next equation. Well, let's go back and have a look. B1 is the only one that's going to be active 
at t equals zero. Because at t equals zero, the sine term there is going to be zero. And the exponential term is going to be one. And the cost term is going to be one. So basically, the current is going to be equal to B1. And we already said that the current at T0, the current at T0 was 5 amps. Okay? So that's why we can just look at that and on site at T0, we can say that B1 is equal to 5. So the only one now we need to find is B2. And in order to find B2, we are going to use our differentiated, our differentiated solution. Now notice that we have minus 20. So our differentiated solution at t equals 0 is going to have to come out to minus 20. So where did the 5b2 and 5b1 come from? Well, let's go back here and have a look. Look at our differentiated uh, solution, and remember that we're still dealing with t equals 0. So the sign terms are going to disappear at t equals 0. So we are going to have, the cost terms are going to be 1, and the sign terms are going to be 0. So we are going to have, and of course the exponential terms are going to be 1 as well at t equals 0. So we're going to have minus 5b1 plus um, 5b2. 5b2. So let's go back and have a look at what we did. Right, so we have 5b2 minus 5b1. And then when we just solve that, we find that b2 is equal to 1. So now we have b1 and b2. We just put them in and our final solution is shown there. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.